Greetings and welcome to the vital and virtual worship with St. Luke's United Church of Christ in Independence, Missouri. Throughout all time, believers of many traditions have engaged in the worship of God as a means to express their faith and find needed spiritual strength for the living of life during the prolonged days and unusual challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is our steadfast mission to sustain and nurture our connection to God and to one another. While we miss gathering in person and singing together, I hope you will engage as fully as possible in today's live stream worship service. Take a moment to greet one another in the comments of the live stream. Let us know who you are and where you're worshiping from. Share your prayer requests in the comments of the live stream during the prayer time. Various methods in which you can present your offerings will be posted in the comments during the time of offering in today's service and may also be found on the St. Luke's website. Online hosts are available to welcome you and answer any questions that you may have during the service. Congregational readings will be posted in the comments of the live stream, or you may access a complete bulletin for today's worship service from the link in the comments or on St. Luke's website. Like always, the vitality of ministry is dependent upon faithful and committed participation of the whole congregation. During the past five months, those directly involved in the live streaming of the service have been the ones who are primarily visible because of the talent of Margie and Matthew, because of Jeff's technology and skill, because of Nanette and Marita's tireless attention to social media connections, because I am streaming six days a week, it is easy to think that a oh, few people are responsible for the way St. Luke's has been able to adapt to the challenges we have faced. And to be sure, we are doing a better job because of the devoted contributions of our staff and volunteers. Behind the scenes, though, the Council has been actively engaged and giving careful and prudent attention to the congregation's best response to COVID-19. But a few good leaders, no matter how skilled they are, do not make for a vital congregation by their efforts alone. Every member has sacrificed a lot of what they have known church to be, gathering together. Members have remained engaged and are adapting to worshiping online. Faithful and generous giving has continued to support our uninterrupted ministry at St. Luke's. A great part of this journey is that everyone is sacrificing, adapting, and moving forward together. This is and remains a congregational response, and I celebrate the presence and participation of each and every person this morning and throughout every week as we continue. This week on Thursday, the children will have their final session of summer fun. This will be a Zoom call with the kids on Thursday morning, August 20th at 10 o'clock a.m. The lesson will cover the New Testament personality, Tabitha, and we will be doing the call from Tabitha's closet a clothing closet in Independence that closes, uh, clothes uh, students from Independence and Fort Osage school districts. We've been collecting school clothing for students, and if you have some to drop off, we need those donated at the church by Tuesday, and we will be sharing those and delivering them as part of the lesson for the summer fun with the kids on Thursday morning. We appreciate those who have already taken the opportunity to drop off clothing. We are delighted and blessed week by week to have Matthew at St. Luke's, and now we have a chance to bless Matthew in return. In an expression of our appreciation and support for Matthew, we have offered him an opportunity to perform a virtual concert to help him make ends meet while his opportunities in other venues remain canceled. He will perform and the concert will go live on, on Facebook from St. Luke's Sanctuary on August 30th at 2 p.m. This is an opportunity, a chance to enjoy Matthew in concert and to express our support and appreciation 
to all he brings to St. Luke's. The ways that you can give and support Matthew will be uh, posted and made known as we come to the date of that concert. Virtual Sunday school classes are being prepared for and will begin on September 13th. The kids will have a video each Sunday morning at 9.30 and there will be follow-up lesson activities that they can do at home throughout the week. The Prophets class taught by Dan O'Neill will be a Zoom call on Sunday mornings at 9.30. The Dreamers class taught by Paula McKinney will have a Zoom class at 10 o'clock on Sundays. The Wayfinders class, taught by John McKinney, will use another platform and the time will be determined when that group gets together, as will the class for the youth group. So stay tuned. We're making plans and getting things in order to start a virtual Sunday school class until we can be back together. That will begin on September 13th. We're also planning to begin a confirmation class this year. It will begin after Labor Day and be conducted by Zoom. And the time and day of that will also be determined when we get the students and parents together. Please let us know who is interested in being a confirmand in the first ever St. Luke's Zoom confirmation class. This will be a unique opportunity as we think about the confirmands finding their place in the church as we endure and emerge from a global pandemic. From all of the places we may be worshiping now, let the music and the sacred beauty of Margie and Matthew's talent focus our hearts and minds as we enter into the worship of our God.
please join in our call to worship. In our worship, let us bring our whole selves before God, our troubles and our anxieties. God knows our thoughts and hears our prayers. In our worship, let us lay down our pride and arrogance and seek God's favor. God grants our petitions and gives us peace. In our worship, let us pour out our souls before the living God. God gladdens our hearts and gives us the fullness of joy. Call to confession. Let us approach God with a pure and sincere heart, confessing the deeds and distractions that have kept us apart from fellowship with God and with one another. Let us be mindful of the ways we have become self-focused and lost sight of community. We cannot undo all the wrong we have done, but we can be forgiven and restored to the path of kingdom living. Prayer of Confession. Ever present and listening God, we confess that we often neglect to respond to life in constructive ways. We see suffering and evil, and we shake our heads. We see wrongs done to us, and we take offense. We feel alienation from you and one another, and accept it as our destiny. Forgive us and open our eyes to your kingdom. Let us see your power to restore wholeness to our world and to our lives. Amen. When we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and restore us to kingdom living. Thanks be to God. It's good to be back and see everybody today, or at least imagine everybody who's seeing me. So that's the trick that we've gotten used to over the past few weeks. But come Thursday, I'll be able to see all of my friends who joined me on the Zoom call for the summer fun. So we'll be at Tabitha's Closet. Now, Tabitha's Closet is a place that helps kids who are getting... Uh, going back to school and, and getting clothes that maybe they need to prepare to be dressed and ready for school. So if you have some clothes around your house that you've outgrown or you're not going to be wearing anymore, pack them up and you and your folks bring them, drop them off at the church, and we will share those with other students through Tabitha's Closet. And we'll be having our lesson there about the lady named Tabitha. Now, it's not her actual closet, but we'll talk all about that when we get there. But here's the thing I want you to do. If you've got some clothes to share, bring them up here. But when we get our Zoom call going on Thursday morning, I want everybody to have on whatever they're going to wear the first day of school. Okay? So some of you, I know, are going to be learning at home. And if that's uh, maybe your, uh, just shorts and a T-shirt or whatever, you know, have, have your school clothes on. And we'll see your, your school clothes that you're going to be wearing to school, wherever you're going to be learning. And your mask. Don't forget your mask. Everybody's going to have to wear a mask. So have your school clothes on and your mask. And I'll get to see you in your clothes, in your school clothes and your mask. And it's not going to be uh, the same as us being together for sure. But it'll be better than me just imagining you. And we'll see you on the Zoom call. And I'm looking forward to that. But we are kind of gearing up for going back to school and we'll talk a little bit about that next week but today I want us to think about what we typically do in school and 
we ask a lot of questions. It seems like the teacher asks a lot of questions, but, but students have a way of asking a lot of questions too. So I want you to imagine what's the question that you would most like to ask your teacher, but here's something even more to think about today. If Jesus was teaching your class, if Jesus was your teacher, what would be one question? If you could ask Jesus one question, what would that question be? Hmm. Maybe you'll have to think about that, and if you can think about it, maybe uh, type it in the comments and let us know what you would ask Jesus. The one thing that's on your mind that maybe only Jesus could answer, or Jesus could answer better than anybody else. So today we're going to be seeing what Jesus' disciples, they asked him a question. They probably asked him a lot of questions, but today we're going to be looking at one special question that they asked Jesus. And you know what? I'm glad they asked Jesus that. You have to listen and see what it's going to be. But I'm glad they asked Jesus that. Because when he explained it to them, they thought it was so important that his disciples wrote it down and wrote down the answer. And we still turn to that answer. We still turn to what Jesus told his disciples. And so today in church, we're going to learn what that lesson was. Maybe you have your own questions, but listen today and see what the disciples ask Jesus. Their one question for Jesus It's an answer that we all know. And it's because the disciples had the courage to ask the question. So here today, I want to encourage you to always ask your questions. Good questions, well, they're only good questions. There's no bad question. Every question you have, ask those questions. Maybe we can't answer them, but we'll think about them together. Because maybe, maybe it'll help somebody later on, just like the disciples' question continues to help us today. Thank you, God, for questions, even ones that don't seem to have answers. But thank you especially for the questions that people ask and that teach us lessons and draw us closer to you and help us walk with you and grow in our faith. Bless us as we ask our questions, as we grow and learn. In Jesus' name, amen. we come to our prayer time today, I want to update you on Pastor David. Pastor David Lyon is home from the hospital and continues to do some uh, therapy there, but at home, but he's doing well, and we're certainly glad to hear and share news that, that Pastor David is home and doing well. Tom Johnson is a friend of our congregation, and he had a heart attack about a week ago. Tom remains in intensive care, and either today or tomorrow, he's going to have an additional procedure to try to guide him toward recovery. So we continue to pray for Tom and Penny Johnson. If you have prayer requests, you can add those to the comments now and we will join in lifting those up to God throughout the week. Please share those and feel free to do so. Let us go now to God in prayer. Holy God, we come to you in prayer because it is the natural inclination of our hearts and our souls. We pray because we need to know that you are present with us. We need to know that your care abides with us. We come asking for more of your spirit in our lives. We come seeking a clearer understanding of your will. We come knocking for doors of opportunity to open. We come knowing that you are always more ready to give than we are to receive. So today we pray for those infected and affected by COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones, who are sick, who work in fear of becoming sick, who are at risk of being exposed to the coronavirus. We pray for those who have no work at all. We pray for those who stand to lose housing or life's necessities. We pray for those today who struggle beneath emotional and social burdens. We pray today for our spiritual struggles during these days, 
spiritual struggles with connectedness, with meaning, with purpose and hope. A spiritual struggle even some days of assurance of our faith. Open our eyes, let us see your presence with us. Make your presence and your purpose known to us, your comfort and your grace to all who struggle. Let us lift our voices now and pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Included in this reading is a version, Luke's version, of the Lord's Prayer. That prayer can also be found in the sixth chapter of Matthew in its more complete version with which we're most familiar. For the context of today's sermon, I've chosen to read the Gospel of Luke. But when we talk about the wording of the Lord's Prayer in the sermon, we'll be using the version that we're most familiar with from Matthew's Gospel. If that's confusing, just stay with me. It won't matter. And it came about that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you shall have a friend, 
and shall go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me from a far journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And from inside he shall answer and say, Do not bother me. The door has already been shut, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and gift him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. And I say to you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For every one who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it shall be opened. Now suppose one of your fathers is asked by a son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he is asked for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give to the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. They knew he prayed. They knew they needed to pray. And if they did pray, then they wanted to pray like he did. So the disciples asked Jesus, How do you pray? From this inquiry came what we know and love as the Lord's Prayer. But I wonder if the words of that prayer were Jesus' first response to the disciples' question. I wonder if perhaps some of the exchange of the conversation may be omitted from the record of the Gospels. If we look carefully at the techniques that Jesus used in teaching, we will notice that Jesus often answered a question with a question. If Jesus used that same technique in this situation, what might the question have been Jesus asked in response to the disciples' question of, how do you pray? I think the question that Jesus might have asked might have been this. How do you not pray? For as Thomas Carlyle said, prayer is and remains always a native and deepest impulse of the soul of humankind. Prayer is the center of a true and authentic soul when that soul stands in a sense of full awareness. The simple but profound words of this prayer may have been Jesus saying, How do you not pray? Just awaken your soul. Let your soul become aware of your surrounding, and there is no way to not pray. If your soul is awakened to God, to your needs, and to the needs of the world, you will instinctively pray. You will have to pray. There simply will be no other choice. So, in an attempt to get the disciples and us to awaken to our surroundings, to unleash the impulse of our souls, Jesus offers some focal points or trigger words. The model prayer begins, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus says, All you have to do to pray is awaken your heart and soul and think about God. When you focus your attention on God, you cannot not pray. The psalmist is moved to praise and adoration as God becomes the focal point of his thoughts. The names used to address the very thought of God proclaim wonder and awe. God of angel armies, Lord of hosts, El Shaddai, God of glory. When you want to know how to pray, when you want to pray, whenever you do pray, Jesus tells us to think about God. When you think about God, how can you not pray? With the psalmist, you will stand in awe and your heart will instinctively follow the deepest impulse to pray. Jesus continues with the words, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Maybe Jesus was aware that it sometimes takes a great deal of effort to focus our attention upon God. 
in Jesus' day and in ours, it is difficult for a broken heart to get a clear glimpse of anything beyond the plight of the world in which we find ourselves. The pain in reality can cloud and obscure our vision even of the very presence of God. Jesus says, if you can't think about God, then think about the world. Think about the brokenness of the world. Think about the 165,000 people in the United States who have died of COVID-19. Think about the violence, the hate, the selfishness and pride. Think about where this kingdom has gotten us and how far it is from the will of God. Think about how different things would be if God's will would come on earth as it is in heaven. Against that backdrop, think about what the kingdom of God would look like. The peace, the mercy, the compassion, wholeness. If you want to know how to pray, what to pray about, when you can't even think about God, just think about the world. You can't help but think about it. It's constantly the reality in which we live. But don't let that be paralyzing to overcome you and not leave you knowing what to do next. Go ahead. Think about the world. How can you think about the world and not pray? Think about the world and what God longs for the world to look like. And the impulse of your soul will begin to plead longingly for God's kingdom to come. For God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here's something else to think about if you want to know how to pray, Jesus says. Think about physical needs. Think about daily bread. About the needs of survival. Besides the more than 5 million people in the United States who have been infected with COVID-19, think about the countless people who have been affected by the coronavirus. Think about those who lack adequate access to food and shelter. Think about those who have lost jobs or have been cut off from community. Ah, but that's not me. I have what I need and then some. All the more reason to pray. The fact that we are blessed and have what we need is reason enough to pray, not only a prayer of thanksgiving for what we have, but a prayer that arises from the impulse of a pure heart, a heart of compassion. Allow the awareness of the physical needs of others to flood the awareness of your soul. You will pray, oh, you will pray, how could a pure and compassionate heart not pray? in light of the daily needs of so many. This pandemic is a struggle that has called us to take a close look at how we as individuals, as a church, as a society can endure and emerge stronger as a community. Think about how much we need each other and yet how divided we have become under the pressure of these days. Think about relationships, and when you do, how can you not pray? How can we not pray for forgiveness? How can we not pray for strength and courage to forgive others? In the awareness of broken and strained relationships, how can we just let it go? How can we not pray, seeking reconciliation that frees us from the pain and suffering of broken relationships and unforgiving hearts? How can a pure and true heart not pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? We act as if we don't know how to pray when in fact we really do. Why? Because praying demands we become authentic. Prayer demands that we look at ourselves with a true heart. And that may be painful. Jesus says, if you want to know how to pray, you might start by thinking about your weaknesses in a way that no longer avoids acknowledging them. You might attempt to create a false self in the script of your life, but Jesus says, if you want to know how to pray, if you want to follow the impulse of a true and pure heart, pray like this. Lead us not into temptation, into the path of our own weakness. If you want to know how to pray, think about the dangers and challenges we face. 
The coronavirus, like Jesus' model prayer, teaches that community is about us and what we need, not about me and what I might want. It shifts the perspective from how does this affect me to how does this affect us. Think about not only your emotional, physical, and spiritual trials. Think about the immensity of the task of so many struggling beneath burdens unimaginable. And when you think about that, how can you not pray, deliver us from evil, protect us, all of us. With these familiar and much loved words, Jesus is asking us to think and focus on things that grab our hearts, our pure and true hearts, things that reach us and touch us in the depths of who we are, things that move us to the point that we can do nothing but pray. All too often we think about these things and still don't pray. We think about these things and do everything but pray. When we think about the brokenness of the world and our relationships, when we think about our needs and our weaknesses and the dangers we face, we complain, we judge others and hold grudges, we worry and react in fear, we strategize, and trust irrational voices. At best, we may say words of a prayer, this one or others, but do we really pray? Do we stand in honesty and humility before God? Do we respond in faith and in commitment to God and to God's kingdom? How do you pray? It is still a prevailing inquiry among followers of Christ and of other spiritual paths. In fact, books on prayer and books about how to pray still lead the publishing and reading list today. It might all be more simple than it seems. Jesus tells us when it comes to praying, it is about opening ourselves, our hearts and souls before God. Praying is about becoming aware of God, the world, and ourselves. If and when you do that, if and when you stand with a pure and open heart, you will instinctively pray. When we need to take a real close look at God, at the suffering of the world and the needs of others, at the dangers we all face, the uncertainties flooding our lives during a global pandemic, how can we not pray? In the midst of all the dangers and perils of these days, we can know with all assurance that God's kingdom and power and glory are forever and ever. Just knowing that, when we are uncertain about all else, how can we not pray? Amen.
We have been taught to pray to God for the coming of God's kingdom. The persistence of our prayer must be supported with our best efforts and our generous gifts. Let us join in God's humble work of compassion and justice on earth. Let us dedicate ourselves and offer our resources for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I invite you to pray with me as we dedicate our lives and the gifts that will be brought to God. Gracious God, we have prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. We offer these gifts and our lives as signs of our commitment toward the living out of our prayer. Strengthen us with the Holy Spirit to move forward in faith with enthusiasm as followers of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
May the God of peace be with you and guide your way with hope and comfort. Be well.